Well, let me take you up to the day of. So I was, I was all excited. I went to bed at a reasonable time. I checked the weather. The weather that day was, it was kind of weird. The ceilings were kind of low. The winds were uh, mainly, from what I understood, was out of Beaufort. They were at a uh, zero six zero, uh, which weren't too far away from that location. So I felt like, okay, uh, weather's kind of, it, it, it's kind of, it's doable, but it wasn't the prettiest day. So I wasn't even sure if we were gonna get be able to fly, but. I, I asked about what flights I had and then went, went over, just kind of gave my, my little safety thing, safety spiel as far as, you know, let's have a good time, let's be safe kind of deal. Uh, and then there was again, you know, like just this, this person that hired me, just a lot of... They, they would put a lot of, and, and a lot of operations do this. They put a lot of weight on their pilots, which I, to, for the life of me, I, I, you know, you really, you want a relaxed pilot, you know? It's like, I don't know, the players in a game, you want those players to, to perform at their peak. And by putting all this negative, you know, uh, verbiage, I guess it's, it's just not the, the best to me, I mean, I'm, like I said, second operation, so I might be wrong. Maybe some uh, somebody has been in tours for longer, uh, helicopter air tours, uh, you might comment down below and totally correct me and say, hey, that no, this is what we need. But hey, I mean, I've been in jobs with high pressure. Firefighting is a very high pressure job and, and it just helps to have everybody relaxed on the same page and, and just uh, not worry about, you know, just putting all that, you know, pressure on somebody. But that's what was said. Anyhow, I just try to kind of blow it off. But I will tell you, I, I was, you know, we, I took off. It was a, uh, they had put the helicopter away on a platform. And so, I, I pre-flight it, checked everything while it was on the platform, started it, took off from the platform, and then I was loaded with my passengers. And so, you know, regular rigmarole uh, as far as checking ATIS, uh, making the radio calls, things like that. And so, took off. I, I'm not going to lie. I made mistakes. I made mistakes and... So, some of these mistakes, I, I guess I, I can attribute it to just maybe this being the first time, uh, just um, not taking my time. So definitely if you're in this situation, certainly take your time, take a deep breath, what have you. That's, I thought I was doing that, but I guess I wasn't doing it to the, the, the level that I should have done it. So take off, go on that, down the beach, go over my talking points. Was I the smoothest? Certainly not. I, I think it was, you know, I was trying to digest the whole life straight and level, go down the beach, don't go past the point that you need to. Uh, make my turn, make my radio call back up. Once I made my radio call, joined the downwind, make a base and come in to land. Now, when I came in to land, I was always, it, time is always a factor when you're flying tour operations. You can't be flying these like when you were in flight school and t just taking your time and what have you. So my approach was a little bit faster, but I feel like I have the hours, and it was, to me, I, I explained this very thoroughly, that I said, to me, it was a stable approach. The, you know, I use speed to, to kind of get in that ground effect, and then uh, just, just kind of stopped 
at the area where we used to land. I, I kind of passed a little bit, but this is not something that, you know, n newer pilots uh, don't do, especially, I mean, I do have to say, the the spot was not clearly marked. So there, there was, normally you have like an H, you have a, the this place, it, you know, they just use the oil spot to kind of, yeah, land by the oil spot. So it wasn't the greatest marked place, but kind of passed it a little bit, backed it up, sat down, um, rolled off, put my frictions on, and uh, thanked my passengers, and, and off they were. And she kind of came in and, you know, uh, started kind of reviewing my flight uh, from there and so um, had a little conversation while I was kind of shutting down in the helicopter and from there uh, she said go ahead and shut the, the helicopter down and, and come talk to me in the office. So I took my time, I shut the helicopter down properly, I made sure everything was done uh, according to the checklist and then I, I went inside uh, to, to talk to this person and so, uh, and the, I remember that the guy who lost his medical, he was also there and they kind of reviewed everything that had transpired they came clean and told me that those weren't actual real passengers, that they were actually friends of theirs and that every pilot kind of goes through this, which another thing, you know, it, it, it was the operation, it was always full of like little surprises and it just, it didn't, it didn't really make sense to me when they said, hey, you're going to be the only guy. And so another one of those here put put all the all the pressure on somebody that's that's pretty much brand new, kind of setting you up for failure than, rather than success. And I I shared this with a friend of mine, and he he told me he's like, dude, you're you know you're kind of getting thrown out to the wolves, but what have you? It was one of those things. I I didn't I could have asked for more time, but at the same time, if I would have done that, then I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity and I felt like to me at the time I was like well take the shot take the opportunity try you know try to do the the flight on your own because who knows great things might come of it uh, hindsight did I feel like I needed more time sure I could have definitely used another week and, and maybe things would have been a little bit different but I was I just wasn't thrilled about the whole um, you know, fake passenger kind of deal. Maybe some operations do that. I I had never heard of people doing that. I mean, it if you know that they're fake passengers, that yeah, fine. But when you're kind of thinking like that, it just it doesn't bode well with me. Uh, if they're kind of playing these games, and what other games would they play in the future? Anyhow, on the grand scheme of things. It was decided that just we weren't we weren't a fit for each other, and so I uh, I went ahead and, uh, and and turned in uh, you know all I got was one one polo so I got that turned in and and about a week later uh, they 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 paid uh, you know for for my time so I can't I can't really fault uh, them in that sense um, they they honored everything that they said they would they honor except for those little things that I mentioned that just I thought that you know if, if you're gonna try to set somebody up set them up for success and set them up for failure so returning back to Florida I I had a great support system and unfortunately that support system is uh, no longer in the picture and so I'm having to kind of start back up from, from scratch in that sense. So I, what, what I've decided is I need to go and get my CFI completed. I was able to get my, my FOIs if, if you're training for 
any kind of CFI, I'm sure you, this uh, makes sense to you. Uh, I got my FOI, I got my FRH completed before I actually uh, came up here to, to do the second uh, job, commercial helicopter um, tour job. So I want to get my CFI completed. I want to get back down to Florida and um, I, I need kind of like a, a place actually. So somebody's watching this, uh, I'm looking, I'm actually looking for a place down Daytona, Spruce Creek, New Smyrna, the land, the berry, that, that whole area. Uh, I just need a kind of room uh, to, to rent and, uh, and, and to get my training uh, going. So if you uh, know of anybody, uh, just comment down below and let me know and maybe we can uh, definitely work some now but uh but that was my experience uh to summarize you know the 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 move the fast training the take take a deep breath honestly and sometimes you know uh you are not going to be a good fit it doesn't mean that you're you're a bad pilot. It doesn't mean uh, anything uh, like that. It just means you're just not a right fit for the company. So uh, and and it doesn't hurt. Like I like I'm going back and getting more training to to be sure that I am the best pilot that I can be. So uh, it doesn't hurt to to self analyze, and that's what I've been doing the past few weeks. So uh, thank you for thank thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully uh, I can I can come back and and definitely uh, uh, give you a little bit more positive content this is kind of more like a uh, I feel like it's lessons learned which those are always good but it's not the my typical upbeat type content that I like to put out so um, I do apologize if it seems a little bit uh, a little bit down but we're come back. We're come back with a vengeance. So uh, hopefully everybody keeps watching. Hopefully everybody stays well. And this has been Jay Lugo uh, with Skybomb signing out. Take care.